In this lesson, we'll continue our review of Math Test 7, Section 4, Chapter Permitted, Questions 29 and 30. These are the last few questions before the grid in. We know that these will be the most difficult problems because at the grid ends, the difficulty will reset. So let's take a look at question 29. A circle in the xy plane has this equation, which of the following points does not lie in the interior of the circle? One equation you have to know, it may come up one time on the test, is the standard form for the equation of a circle. And I'll give it to you, it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Where h and k are the coordinates, x and y respectively, of the center of the circle. And also, it's the opposite sign. So if we had x minus 5, that would mean the x is positive 5. If it were x plus 5, it would be negative. And so you, this is a concept you, you need to know. It might come up one time, and then it's equal to r squared. And so just by looking at this equation, we know what the center of the circle is, right? Here's our x. It's positive 3, so it's negative 3 for the x. And negative 1 is going to be positive 1. This is the center of the circle, and we also know the radius. Radius squared is 25, so the radius is 5. Now at this point, once you realize that it's radius is 5, or even if you kept it like this. Some students might just plug these in. I think it takes too much time. And also, another type of question, you, you, you can't do it this way. You need to understand this concept and how to graph it. So let's um, sketch this out. We know the center is negative 3, 1. So 1, 2, 3, and 1. So it's right here, negative 3, 1. And the radius is 5. And so that means we don't know which direction, but we know it can't be more than 5 away. And if you look at these choices, you could see like this has a negative 7, so that's 4 away. It goes up, and you might want to use the Pythagorean theorem. That takes too much time. Look for one that's obviously beyond 5. And I think D really stands out because here the x is negative 3. D is positive 3. And it's not even on the same plane. Remember, this is 1. It's even up higher. Even if we went from negative 3 on the same plane straight across to positive 3, that's 6, and it's even higher. This one is definitely outside of the interior of the circle. And so I think just an easier way to do it, and definitely you need to know this formula. Sometimes you'll see this problem where you have to complete the square. It may come up one time. All right, let's take a look at question number 30. The manager of an online news service received the report above on the number of subscriptions sold by the service. The manager estimated that the percent increase from 2012 to 2013 would be double the percent increase from 2013 to 2014. How many subscriptions did the manager expect would be sold in 2014? So we're given both the amounts in 2013. This is a concept that does come up as well. How do we find the percent increase? And Whenever you're doing percent increase, whatever number you're starting with before the change, so in this case, the 5,600, we're going to call this the base. Think about base as the starting amount, but it's also the base of the ratio. It's the denominator. We're always going to put the number that we started at before the change on the bottom. What number goes on the top? It's not 5,880. We want percent increase. We're already at 5,600. You're going to put 280. That is the number it increased by. Right? 280 is the change. If it were decreased, the 5600 would be on top. And then you'd put the change. And you don't need a negative because that's what decrease means. And so first we're going to get this ratio, which is 280. And we're going to divide that by 5600. This will give us the original, the original percent change. It's 5%. Or 0.05. And now we're told that the percent increase from 2012 to 2013, which we just determined this is 5%, would be double the percent increase from 2013 to 14. So this next increase is only going to be half that, which is 2.5. And we want to see what this value is. And now this is a different problem. This is easier because we're given the starting amount. We just want an increase of 2.5%. And so what we're going to do is take this 5880. And to get an increase of 2.5, we're just going to multiply it by 1. Right? 1 is the original amount plus 0 0.025, and that'll give us the answer. And so it's 5880 times 1.025, and it's 6,027. The answer is D.